Welcome to Conversations with OLA. My name is Minerva Perez, and I'm the Executive Director of OLA. OLA stands for Organización Latino Americana. We are a nonprofit that was founded in 2002, a Latino-focused nonprofit, but the work that we do benefits the entire East End, and we are proud to do this work. And um, I want to explain a little bit about the show and how it came to be. Uh, we had been, uh, we have been so blessed and fortunate to work with members of our community, organizations. Uh, collaborating with organizations on the work that we do and uh, we just found that it was such an overwhelming bounty that why share these relation why, why not share these relationships why uh, how can we just keep going so quickly through the course of our day and our week and our month and our year and not be able to stop for a moment and share some of the folks that we get to work with and learn more about them what makes them do this work how did they end up on the east end of Long Island uh, who are they and so pretty much as a connection point between the people that we'll have on the show and the work that they might do with OLA or the volunteer work that they might do or the collaborations. Um, so that's going to be a constant of the show. Um, I co-host this in English and Sandra Dunn, our associate director, uh, she will do her shows mainly in Spanish and sometimes we shake it up a little bit. And uh, so that's how we're doing conversations with OLA and we are so happy that you are watching and if you would like to reach out to OLA about anything that you're hearing or learning, no matter when you're watching the show, uh, you can always call 631-899-3441. Uh, look for us on our Facebook page or go to our website, www.olaofeasternlongisland.org. And without further ado, I want to introduce you to Tom Oleschuk. He is a crisis counselor for OLA's Project Hope, uh, which is a, uh, a helpline that was established through a FEMA model. So uh, FEMA, uh, in conjunction with the state of New York, decided based on numbers of mortality and sickness that Suffolk County uh, qualified as a region that was very, very negatively and sadly impacted by COVID. And because of that crisis need that uh, Ola was able to apply to become a provider of Project Hope. And uh, we'll, we'll talk more about what that actually means. Uh, but we were very proud to be given that role and that responsibility to cover the entire East End uh, in English and in Spanish uh, for Latinos and non-Latinos. And Tom has been uh, such a tremendous part of this team, this crisis counselor team, uh, and he's going to talk more about that. But Tom Oleschuk, I'd like you to tell us a little bit about you first, uh, the work you've done before you came uh, to Ola and your connection to the East End. Hi. Well, thank you, Minerva, for having me. A delight. Uh, I uh, would like to say that, uh, you know, first of all, before I go into me, mm -hmm. that uh, uh, OLA has always been a sparkling organization in my eyes for the, for the work it's done uh, for the community as well as in particular for, uh, you know, the Latinos uh, out here on the East End. Um, uh, the, um, you know, the Project HOPE grant uh, you know, provided me with an opportunity that I didn't have to work more closely with you and to, to give back to the community, and I really appreciate that. So where should I start uh, in terms of about me? I want to know more about Tom, and I want to learn right now, <laughs> which is essentially live <laughs> for me. Um, but talk, talk to me about what, what you've done before and okay. who you are. Okay. Well, uh, I uh, uh, actually was a college professor for many years, and... Uh, I was a college professor of political science, and uh, as they say, I published and perished. Uh, <laughs> but on the other hand, the, the phoenix arose, and I went into uh, uh, information technology mm -hmm. and uh, became um, eventually a director of academic computing uh, at Yeshiva University. Uh, and uh, uh, then about 12 years ago, I retired mm -hmm. and came out here. And it was, uh, uh, it was something that uh, we thought about. Uh, I could have worked more mm -hmm. uh, in mm -hmm. IT, but we loved the East End. We had come out 
uh, for a week or two at a time, mm -hmm. uh, generally to Montauk, uh, and uh, uh, you know we just uh, just love the natural uh, endowments uh, of the East End and the uh, and the people, um, and we decided, well, let's give it a, a, sh a shot, yeah. and uh, uh, we moved out here. And in retirement, I was doing uh, a number. Uh, of more artistic things, you know, including uh, poetry and photography, uh, as well as uh, uh, you know, playing and teaching chess uh, to kids. Oh, I didn't know. Okay, excellent. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, so my my background has been a bit varied, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I've sort of seen uh, um, uh, a whole variety of people in a variety of, of situations, mm -hmm. and. Particularly during the years that I was in uh, information technology, we had a help desk, mm -hmm. and so I, uh, I first of all participated directly, and then eventually managed it. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, you see, uh, uh, people that that call generally call for some good reason, mm -hmm. and they're usually upset. Mm -hmm. And part of the job is to make them feel more comfortable with their circumstance and to try and help them to find a solution. Uh, and uh, okay. that, uh, uh, that is in so many ways like what Project Hope does and what Ola does as well, you know, okay. through, uh, you know through your, your phone lines. So, uh, so let's talk a little bit more about Project Hope. And, I'm, and I want to get to know more and more about Tom as we continue to get to work together. And I'm so lucky to work with you. And also know your amazing wife, Heidi, and how connected you are to this community in so many ways and how uh, what advocates you both are uh, with regard to Shinnecock Nation um, mm -hmm. as well. And you're just, it's wonderful to watch what you do and, and, and the way you do it, because you do it with a lot of love and a lot of respect. And um, it's, really, it's really wonderful. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, uh, uh, Heidi and I have been active um, in a social activism kind of way mm -hmm. since we moved out here. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, uh, one of the things that we discovered was there is this indigenous people that are here. We, when we came to vacation, we never realized it. Mm -hmm. It was something that we had to live here and to start to understand that. Uh, uh, I suppose when we were driving out uh, on the highway and we saw you know, Shinnecock Canal and such, we figured, well, it's like Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. It's an Indian word that, uh, uh, you know, that the, uh, the colonists took on to describe an area. Mm -hmm. We didn't realize that there uh, was actually a, a community, a, a very poor community uh, mm -hmm. that uh, was located here. So we began to, uh, to work with them as allies. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And, and uh, uh, we discovered as well that uh, um, uh, there was uh, an uh, increasingly active uh, Black Lives uh, uh, supporting movement mm -hmm. uh, here on the East End. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we've gotten involved with that in, as well. And uh, it's uh, um, uh, you know, uh, both of us kind of share uh, the the values of community mm -hmm. and of uh, helping those who could use the help mm -hmm. and, and uh, use the allyship. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Uh, and uh, we both have been to uh, town board meetings in Southampton, mm -hmm. uh, speaking out in in uh, in favor of uh, gravesite protection, mm -hmm. which. Uh, was an issue that shocked us when we found out that New York is one of four states that does not have on the books a law that mm -hmm. says mm -hmm. if, you, if you're digging in your backyard and you come across human bones, mm -hmm. okay, you're supposed to do something. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we don't have that law. Wow. Uh, and so we, uh, we worked with uh, uh, the, the Shinnecock Nation uh, to pressure the town board and eventually they, they did pass regulations. Uh, you know, that uh, uh, provides sort of a minimum amount of uh, respect for the dead. So, Well, getting to watch some of the work that you've been doing uh, out here and mm -hmm. knowing how committed and connected you are uh, is why I wanted to reach out to you and see if you would want to be part of this team, this Project Hope team. Mm -hmm. And when we realized that we were going to be given this uh, role as provider uh, through this grant, um, that we originally we brought on about 20 people, uh, which was a lot of people, but we had all this bounty of these amazing folks in our community, all East End folks, uh, Spanish speaking, English speaking, Portuguese speaking, 
um, all different backgrounds, Shinnecock, uh, African American, Latino, white, you know, we have this whole range. And um, we ran it at that capacity for a while. And then at a certain point when we were going to be up for expansion to go beyond what the terms of the grant originally were, uh, then we kind of scaled it down a little bit uh, and wanted to maintain uh, and retain about a nine or 10 person team. And so you've been a part of that pretty much from the beginning. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I want to talk a little bit now about, um, and Project Hope, talk about it. I might jump in and maybe you know, give some other perspective there, but talk about what Project Hope is. What, what is it in our community? What is it all about? Why, why, what's happening with it? Project Hope uh, is a multi-pronged effort uh, to help the community deal with uh, the enduring crisis of the pandemic and all of its consequences, mm -hmm. uh, you know, including lost jobs, including uh, uh, you know, housing insecurity, uh, uh, and, and including uh, uh, you know, difficulties uh, you know, getting what you need. Mm -hmm. And what Project Hope has is we have a helpline. Uh, uh, it's 631-500-0837. Uh, uh, I'm going to pick up one of these little flyers that we have right now, and I'm going to I'm going to yeah. share it with the with the camera here. Yeah. Um, this is uh, one of several flyers and uh, pieces that have been put together. Um, a lot of what Project Hope is uh, making sure is available in terms of its outreach is also to adolescents and anyone who might not feel as comfortable um, sharing their information. Your information is not asked for. You can be completely anonymous. But we know that some folks, uh, adolescents and other folks, would not feel as comfortable texting a line if it's going to show their number. So we've actually printed on the back of our postcard how you can block your phone number so that your texting to this uh, Project Hope line is not going to be showing who you are or your number for any, you know, any future reason. Mm -hmm. um, and um, the helpline, in addition to being sort of resources that people might need, is also if people are just feeling isolated or that they don't have anyone to talk about a particular thing that's happening with them or an emotion that they're feeling, um, that it's there for them, even if it's not about sort of connecting the dots. It could just be, I just, I don't know where to go with this feeling or this thought. And maybe folks even have their own therapists, but they just right now want a separate avenue to kind of voice what they're feeling. Um, Project Hope is that, and, um, and you are one of the crisis counselors. We have a total of I think at this point, eight, eight crisis counselors, mm -hmm. and we have two MSWs that work on the team. Mm -hmm. And in addition to those eight crisis counselors, the MSWs are there to, um, to support the needs and how things are flowing with the crisis counselors. All counselors have been given training through the state uh, in order to do this work well. And how would you uh, kind of talk about some of the training or what, what you've gotten from that experience? Okay. Yes, uh, the, the training has been kind of quite intense as well as intensive. Mm -hmm. uh, it was you know, b because of the nature of the pandemic uh, back a year ago, and, and uh, it uh, was online, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, the, the, the training was not only through New York State, but also uh, through something called the uh, Center for Practice Innovation, uh, which was a, is a cooperative venture between the state and the, uh, I believe it's the New York Psychiatric Institute uh, or Psychoanalytic Institute. And uh, um, uh, we were trained uh, you know, through, these, uh, uh, through these courses uh, on how to uh, not try and solve the problems, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but rather uh, to listen to people. It's sort of active and sympathetic listening. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the underlining FEMA model uh, is one of resi resilience. Building Re resilience. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, that 80% of the people that are going to call mm -hmm. uh, uh, really have it within them to deal with their own problems. They just don't know where to turn mm -hmm. and which direction to go in and what is the most important thing to deal with first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, the other 20% uh, need uh, you know, really qualified professional, medical, or other uh, kinds of care. And we filter them uh, into the, the right direction. Mm -hmm. If need be, we will uh, you know, conference in one of the MSWs, or if there's a child in, uh, involved, 
Uh, we can uh, telephone, conference in, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the uh, what's it, ch Childhood Protective Services, okay. mm -hmm. uh, uh, and to have an immediate, you know, interaction. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, as you were saying, you know, our helpline is, uh, you know, is anonymous and confidential and free, mm -hmm. and it's the kind of thing that uh, uh, it's for people who just don't know where to turn, mm -hmm. and uh, our normal response when we hear somebody talking is to try and help them to solve it. Yeah. You know, well, why don't you do this? The fixer. Oh, well, you shouldn't feel that way. Well, no, mm -hmm. no, we mm -hmm. validate. Okay, mm -hmm. it, it's a question of I, I understand you feel that way. That's a, that's a, a you know, uh, that, that's a, something that a lot of people feel in, in these circumstances. And uh, uh, tell me more, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that uh, uh, also, okay, we are not diagnosticians, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay. Unlike uh, in psychiatric help, mm -hmm. uh, uh, we are trained not to put people into boxes mm -hmm. and not to think, oh, well, this is a schizophrenic uh, or mm -hmm. th th this is a sociopath or whatever, mm -hmm. but rather just to deal with the person, to listen to them mm -hmm. uh, and to try and help them understand what their situation is indirectly, not by forcing it upon them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do have uh, a very large database of organizations mm -hmm. that uh, can provide specific resources uh, for specific problems, you know, everything from food insecurity through housing, through drug abuse, uh, uh, you know, through education and, and so on. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will, in, in the course of a phone call, you know, we will say, well, uh, it, it sounds to me that uh, you, you may feel that uh, uh, that the problem of food is number one on your list. Uh, is that true? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, yes. Well, would you like some information? Mm -hmm. You know, would you like some phone numbers to call mm -hmm. that could help you to deal with mm -hmm. uh, that problem? And they can say no. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not like, oh, well, oh yes, okay, yeah. So you're hungry. Okay. Well, here's here are five numbers. Yeah. Okay. And uh, uh, the, the logic of it is again, people have within it, uh, within themselves, uh, you know, resilience, they just don't know about it. Mm -hmm. And what you wanna do is, uh, you want them to realize mm -hmm. that they have some power over their lives, mm -hmm. okay? They may not be able to completely change everything, mm -hmm. nobody can, but uh, that, that they can have an effect on some of the things that are bothering them in the real world. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, uh, I found the training both, both interesting and challenging. Mm -hmm. And some of the training had to do with uh, specific groups, uh, uh, the young uh, uh, LBD, LB LGBTQ. TQ. Mm -hmm. Yes, I always stumble over sorry, that. Because right. my mind's thinking of, well, what's the next one in line? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> rather than You're the academic there, sir. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, 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 but in those training sessions mm -hmm. uh, attuned uh, each of us to some of the special problems, and uh, um, and of course there are you know the, there are sessions about uh, as well uh, uh, you know about race and ethnicity, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the the uh, the need to be sensitive to mm -hmm. cultural differences mm -hmm. and to the differences in circumstances, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and one of the things that we don't really say is oh yeah I understand I've been there. Mm -hmm. No, you haven't. Each person is different, mm -hmm. and you know you express sympathy rather than uh, sort of cognitive agreement. Mm -hmm. No, I, th I think it's fantastic. Uh, where, where Ola kind of helped to jump a little bit from some of that training was also to include um, some other aspects of training, such as trafficking and domestic mm -hmm. violence. Mm -hmm. And then we brought in some of our partnerships with local law enforcement mm -hmm. so that local law enforcement would feel comfortable. We wanted local law enforcement. We've got 10 police departments on the east end of Long Island, and we want to have each of them feel comfortable to either hand these flyers out or business cards out with Project Hope's number so that whoever they might be encountering, whomever, um, that they feel has been touched by some degree of crisis because they are going to have, they're on the ground first in, you know, EMTs, police, mm -hmm. Um, to make sure that they could feel comfortable with our program and to know that if we found ourselves in a very 
difficult situation, let's say it was someone at a home and they were going to do harm to someone else, that we felt comfortable immediately doing a conference call in with 911 or with whatever that local police department mm -hmm. was and working with our police departments in a partnership kind of way to say that we, we want the right thing to happen here and we'll, you know, we'll do what we need to do um, to make sure that everyone's safe and everyone's cared for. And we went over those protocols. So we, we've created emergency protocols to address some of the, the hardest scenarios that we could ever think of encountering and, and scenarios that we know that, that we've encountered. Ola, certainly, the work that I've done before at the retreat. Um, so we've, we've kind of set up those kinds of trainings in a, in a, a term almost above and beyond mm -hmm. based on what we know about our East End. I want to highlight the fact that the relationship, the reason why Ola even went for this grant, because we had a lot going on, we didn't have to go for this particular grant, was because we, um, the emotional piece of this, this is an emotional helpline. Uh, it is a way to do this in a way that it's not just connecting the dots. We're not an oper uh, operators on the other end saying, oh, you need this, there it is. Mm -hmm. um, that, that that availability and access in Spanish as well as English mm -hmm. is extremely important with people that have that kind of empathetic uh, mindset and training uh, and support. So, and beyond having the helpline is that Ola on the other end of it, we're actually doing a lot of this work. So whereas it is difficult often to find what organizations are on the ground doing the day-to-day -day work um, behind the crisis, you have no food, all right, what, how are we gonna work this out? Project Hope gets to say, hey, Ola, here's this person, or this person's gonna call you, mm -hmm. and that we're ready on the other end of that to figure out, are we gonna connect them up with some of the volunteers that we have? Are we gonna connect them up, which we always do, to pantries? But beyond that, in terms of supplemental, are we gonna be able to get them a stop and shop food card that we've worked hard to get from United Way and other organizations to supplement whatever they can't get in the pantry? Uh, if they need support uh, with further mental health and clinical kind of support, how Ola is gonna work on that. If they are facing an illegal eviction, how is Ola gonna work with local law enforcement and local lawyers to make sure that they are not forced out of their home, if they should not be forced out of their home? Um, so Ola is on the other end of so many of these crisis needs. It allows this kind of collaboration to be such a dynamic one. Um, I want, because we only have um, a few minutes left, I want to talk about the fact that Project Hope has now been extended with, through Ola's Project Hope um, twice now. Um, and I'd like it to be extended indefinitely. Um, mm -hmm. We've seen that the kind of work that Tom and this entire team has been doing across the entire East End has been working with youth, working with uh, uh, disabled youth, uh, working with libraries, working with elderly through senior centers, uh, working just across th through school districts, mm -hmm. uh, doing yoga classes. It, the whole focus being on resilience, building resilience, and kind of ha tapping back into your health and your joy, that there's no other way that this is happening in a consistent way with one organization touching all of these different aspects of our community and doing it the way that you guys are doing it right now, run by Melissa Vogt uh, and, and Jeanette Monsanto, the two MSWs, and with our team of eight crisis counselors, it should continue. This approach should continue. It is based on a crisis model through FEMA, but what a very healthy thing to have in a community so that I know that you guys get to bring that aspect of things, the connectivity, the support, the emotional support, the love, the care, and yeah, Ola gets to focus a bit more on the advocacy and the, some of the nitty gritty, some of the other stuff that we have to do. Um, but having Project Hope out there is kind of just sort of this heart center um, that should continue to exist. And with just a few minutes left, um, tell me why. Tell me why this should continue. And, and I don't want to end in a bad note, but um, I don't want it to discontinue. But tell me why it should continue uh, uh, to, to be something that we can, we can offer to our full East End. And I want to remind everyone that Tom Oleschuk is not Latino. Uh, and how, how important it was for Ola to bring on members of our community in this capacity so our, all members of our community could feel comfortable reaching out and knowing that, you know, sometimes that might be what it takes. You know, this person might have more of my experience or I might feel more comfortable. And it doesn't always work out that way. Everyone has to look like each other or have the same kind of experience, but sometimes it helps to mm -hmm. get the ball rolling. So tell me, why should this continue? Okay. Well, it seems to me that there is not only... Um, a whole set of problems around COVID, but that, uh, generally speaking, mm -hmm. even pre-pandemic, mm -hmm. uh, there are needs that have been uh, neglected 
by the uh, you know, by the government at all levels uh, and uh, uh, needs that uh, uh, private organizations and NGOs haven't been able to cover uh, just because there's so much mm -hmm. that, that needs to be done. And uh, uh, I know that uh, we, in our um, recent uh, uh, expansion into the community with workshops, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we find that there are people that really need to come together in small groups to talk about you know, their problems. That didn't happen before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, it needs to continue mm -hmm. for the uh, for the, the betterment and health of the community as well as of individuals. Uh, and, uh, you know, we are uh, you know, fulfilling functions that uh, uh, our society needs to have fulfilled, uh, whether or not uh, uh, a lot of people realize that. Okay. And, uh, uh, and I think we're doing a lot of good for a lot of people. You're doing tremendous good, uh, and you and your entire team, uh, you are just a, such a, 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 needed, a, a needed support system out here. And, um, and if we could talk another hour, we'd talk about some of the stories that we hear about some of the smiles on the faces of the, mm -hmm. the parents and the children that we're engaging with, the work that's happening with mm -hmm. youth groups in Hampton Bays, the work that's happening in Amagansett and Montauk and Greenport and Riverhead. Um, uh, the work that we're continuing with libraries. It's uh, such an, and, and I almost feel like we're just getting going, you know? <laughs> and so we, we'd love to see it continue in whatever capacity. So whether it is through, specifically through Project Hope or Ola can pick it up mm -hmm. and extend it in another way, we will do our best to do so. Tom, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you everyone for watching and reach out to Ola, reach out to Project Hope. And uh, we look forward to staying connected. Okay, yeah. well, thank you very much, Minerva. It, uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank <music> you.